hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm gonna be giving you part 22 of what if naruto was a badass genius remember to get this one to 200 like as usual share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys stay in tune because after this i'm gonna be posting a new episode of what if naruto was one of the two greatest clans so stay in tune for that and i hope you guys enjoy and also, over on Anime King 2, I'm going to be posting a new episode of What If Naruto Was a God Amongst Man. So stay in tune for that as well, guys. And What If Naruto Was a Deceitful God. So stay in tune for that as well, guys. And remember, if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, and you enjoyed the videos on both Anime King and Anime King 2, what do you say? Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support, guys. And remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say we begin this new episode? Start the intro. <laughs> so, the last part we left off, Naruto brought Ino to the forest as he told her that he was going to train her, as he could make her the best at gathering intel and extracting it. As Naruto then went to visit Sanade, as he told her about the little group that he was going to create. He also told her that one of the rude envoys, Sai, he did not die in the attack of Danzo and he has been currently working for him. As Naruto told Sanade that he will be bringing Sai into the village and he will be a part of the group. As Sanade thought about it and told him that she will accept it. Seeing that Naruto is doing nothing bad against Konoha, he is actually looking out to keep the village safe just because his mother was here. Sanade was happy for that so she didn't went against it. The next day Kushina was called to the office as Sanade was asking Kushina about Naruto as Kushina didn't want to talk about her son. Every time Sanade has been trying to get information out of her and she told her if she do it again she wouldn't answer a question. As Sanade just wanted to know what is going on inside his head, it is hard to work with him when you don't understand the person. As Kushina told her that Naruto doesn't see the people of Konoha as people. He has degraded them to something down to monkeys. Because if you accept something bad from an animal, then they won't disappoint you when they do the bad thing. As Sanade was starting to understand Naruto. Meanwhile, Naruto was training with Neji. As Neji couldn't believe it how strong Naruto was. He was deemed as a prodigy in the Haiga compound, but he was nowhere close to Naruto. As Hinata didn't arrive there. As she told Naruto that soon enough he would be taking up Hanabi, train her as well. She wasn't asking, she was most likely telling him, as Naruto found that really funny. He then sends unwanted guests, as Nechi and Hinata then went off. The moment they went off, two persons flashed beside Naruto. So yeah guys, that was basically last part we left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself, so let's begin this new episode. Two men flashed beside Naruto. One of them brought up their right foot aiming towards Naruto's shoulder. The other one drove a punch towards Naruto's head. Naruto responded by ducking under both attacks. As soon as Naruto went down, the other man brought down his heel on top of his skull as the other man jumped away. Naruto burst into a flock of crows as he appeared a distance away. As he watched a third man in a distance who was doing hand signs. The man landed on the ground before slamming his right hand down. Earth style. Mud wall. As a wall burst out from the ground, blocking Naruto's view. Naruto then heard birds chirping from behind him, as Kakashi was dashing from behind him with the Shidori. The Jonin was upon him in a second, driving the Jutsu towards his back. But Naruto twisted his body as Kakashi passed him, as Naruto grabbed Kakashi's neck. But Kakashi's entire body started to light up. A lightning clone. Earth Prison! said a voice as a wall came around Naruto and the lightning clone as the lightning clone exploded inside with Naruto in there. 
The earth prison also exploded with flames as they were covered with explosive tags. As the three attackers stood side by side as they looked on to the raging flames. You think that got him? Kakashi shrugged. Who knows? I find the way you take my life so nonchalant offensive Kakashi, said Naruto as he was standing behind the three men. As Naruto's cloak was a bit burned, if I was paranoid, I would have thought you were trying to kill me and you would have been successful if not for the second invention. The three quickly turned around before the middleman spoke. Well, he didn't escape without a scratch. If there was a scratch, we would have been summoned by his mother, the second man said, before they all burst into laughter. Naruto raised the eyebrow, but before he could respond, something came to mind. Who would heal him if he was in danger for real? He didn't have a medic in his circle. That was stupid. He had to correct that soon. Naruto shook his head as he turned his focus on the three men in front of him. Tiger, Panther, it has been some time. Is this how you greet me? We are no longer in the Anvu. Well, you left. You were still a trainee. You never graduated to become a full-fledged Anvu, despite the number of dangerous missions we went through, Panther said. Naruto blinked. That was kind of true. He shrugged. It was of little concern. It didn't really mean anything. I'm still in Anvu records. Everything else follows, Naruto said. So, are you returned to Anvu, Kakashi? Naruto asked. Seeing that you're hanging with those kinds. Hey, what do you mean by those kinds? Tiger asks. I think young Naruto has forgotten how Anvu was and the joy that it had. It seems like he reverted back to the old ways where he still see Anvu as stupid, said Panther. Maybe we should teach him what it means to be Anvu once again, said Tiger. As Naruto stared at the two men, what were these two people to him exactly? They were former comrades and people that were invited to his home to have a chat with his mother. He had trust his back with these two in dangerous missions and they always protected. Well, as they would say, we're a team. Apparently, team members look out for each other. Naruto shook his head, clearing his thoughts. I doubt that you came out here just to test me, he said. We were coming to find you when we saw you training. Well, training your student. Kakashi Senpai had told us about it. We never guessed you would be a good teacher. Huh, no wonder. They're gonna make you the trainer of the secret Anvu Academy. What? Naruto said. Tiger hit Panther in the shoulder as he gave him a small glare. Anyway, he said, not explaining to Naruto. Join us later so we can discuss. You sleeping with the captain. What? Naruto said once again. What? Tiger said. The only reason an independent woman like the captain would move out of her house to follow you. There must be something up there. I remember the time you guys play as a boyfriend and girlfriend in that mission to enter the secret hideout. It seems like it came to reality. And we would like to hear more about it later, said Tiger, as he and Panther disappear into nothing. As Naruto turned his gaze towards Kakashi, he must be the one filling their head with nonsense. As Kakashi turned his head not looking directly at Naruto, nice weather today, huh, he said. Naruto stared at him, that was lame. Even Kakashi had to think and know that that was lame. And that wouldn't distract him. Really? Naruto said. Kakashi shrugged. I wanted to say is that the black cat behind you. But I thought you wouldn't fall for that, Kakashi said. You're doing a rather good job in teaching. I am certain you will raise many more skilled shinobi. You're better suited for being a sensei than I am. Is that why you tell your fellow Jonins that I am the sensei of Team 7? Yes, Kakashi said. You get along with those two. But Naruto didn't say anything else about that. What have you been telling them about you, Jiren I? He said. Kakashi I smile. You don't look angry. Why should I be? Naruto said. It was just words, a rumor. It wouldn't harm him in any way. His mother would probably laugh about it and he would take the attention off of Mikato. No one would think something like that. Hmm, for a moment, he considered about going to the flow. Who knows, Kakashi said. So, what have you been busy with? He asked. As Naruto just stared at him. As Kakashi shook his head, trying to start a conversation with Naruto was becoming rather difficult. Maybe it's because they don't spend much time together again. They were close then, even though Naruto would not admit it. I miss the days we used to spend together. Those days when your mother used to stick out her head from the window, threatening me if I ever do anything or tell you anything corrupted. I guess it has been a long time, Naruto said. There has been a lot recently, and we have changed. I guess things started to change after the third make you my sensei. 
you try not to get close to create the impression that you have a favorite. But, of course, I end up taking over Team 7, and you just decided that to take it easy and become a lazy good for nothing sensei. I could say that you were just a good sensei, and I just watch over everything Kakashi said, in a rather weak tone. Yeah, right, Nurta said. Before Kakashi could say anything, Anvu dropped by Nurta's side and whispered something into his ear and then vanished. He then looked at Kakashi. Looks like I've been summoned by the Hokage. Come on, walk with me back to the village. Snavi can wait for a couple of minutes, right? You do make your wait. Kakashi eyes smile. Occasionally, he said, as the both of them start to walk. Minutes later, Hokage's office. Snavi stared at the boy who introduced himself as Sai. Judging by the mask on his face, there was no doubt he was a product of Donzo's brutal training. As he trained his puppets to be emotionally dead, and have an unending love for Konoha as he did. Tell me, Sai, said Snavi. What was Danzo's plan after becoming Hokage? Jeria quickly interjected. Is that really a reason to bring up that dark chapter of the village, Jaime? He asked. I just want to understand things, Jeria. Unlike you, I didn't have many interactions with him over the past years, said Snavi. So, she said, looking at Sai. His plan was to make Konoha the dominating force, in his view. Konoha was the strongest village, and it should be ruling over all of the nations, I said. Before going silent, suddenly, Nurta appeared in the room. As he looked at Sai for a moment, he then went and took a seat beside him. As Sai then continued talking, if it was him, he would have not taken the same route the first Okage did. He would have taken all the bijus and used their power to force them under Konoha rule and to crush the other nations. And you would have supported the madness, asked Navi. Sai nodded, it was my job after all. So Navi shook her head, it was surprised that he was willing to admit that. With a straight face, he wasn't ashamed of it. Nice of you to finally join us, she said, looking at Naruto. But Naruto didn't say anything to her. So Navi shook her head, as she thought that he would have probably given her a response or something. Since Naruto is here, could you tell us what you know about the Akaski, Jaria said, in a serious tone. Sai then went on to share his information. When he was finished, Jiraiya narrowed his eyes. I had heard some rumors that Hanzo was no longer alive and that the new leader of Rain was a new leader of Akaski. But there has been no way to prove this because even if you manage to get into the village, there is no way to get out, Jiraiya said. That was a usual theme about everyone that entered in Rain. They could not get out back. Jiraiya then looked at Naruto, not Sai. How sure are you that the leader of the Akaski is in the hidden Rain? There is no doubt, Naruto said, calmly. Itachi had worked in the organization and Itachi told Naruto where the leader of the organization was. Nevertheless, Itachi told him that the man was incredibly powerful. He wielded a legendary Rengon after all. And Naruto did not know really anything about the Rengon. Even Itachi did not know much about it. The Dojutsu was filled with mysteries. And many people didn't know that it even existed. How, Snade said, how do you know this? She said in a rather stern tone. As Naruto looked at her, we are being civil here and under no obligation to share this with you. Yet, we are doing so because we want to cooperate with each other and eliminate the threat. But when you speak to me in such a tone, it tempts me to hide things from you just for the fun of it, Naruto said. As Naruto then turns attention back to Jiraiya, as you might know Jiraiya, Danzo had dealings with Hanzo. They kept contact until the man assumed that the rain leader was dead. As he wanted to make sure for himself, he did send some people to look into it, but they never returned, Nurta said. Have you considered going into the rain village? asked Navi. Nurta shook his head, I'm not suicidal, but after everything is set up, I will visit it. I just need a way of escaping that won't be a problem, because I can do that in the blink of an eye. I will be coming with you, Jerry said. You can provide a way for us to get out of the village, and I will be there if things become difficult. As Naruto thought about it, fine, he said. When do we go, Jerry asked, a bit excited about going on a mission with Naruto. Not now, Naruto said, I have other things to take care of. By the way, they have been keeping silent, they're not making a move. So it's best for us to just keep watch, seeing that we still don't know what they truly hope to achieve. Even so, they are dangerous and they are a threat. Snaden nodded. They are ex-rank shinobi, how confident are you in fighting them? Problem is that they fight in peers, but if I'm peer with Sasuke I can do it. I don't have any fears in facing them, but I'd rather not do anything suicidal, Naruto said. 
Snavik snorted, said the brat that was involved in the killing of an active Hokage and faced Orochimaru on his own. Naruto simply shook his head, those are different situations, he thought to himself. Circumstances are different, Naruto said. For now, if something else new come up, we will talk about it. But I am still concerned about discovering their real agenda. What is it that they hope to achieve by collecting all the jewels? He then changed the subject, since I am here, how are things going with the agency? You are free to do whatever you want, Snade said in a careless manner. However, she said, Jiraiya will be maintained a super rich and role, and you will have some envoys coming to you to require information about certain things, and you will be not doing anything that Donzo was even remotely doing. If I hear word of anything that passed my instructions, I will disband the group and mark every single one of you as rogue ninjas. Am I clear, she said. You're the Hokage, Naruto said. Is there anything else? Yes, I want personal details of everyone, Snyder said. I cannot vouch for its legitimacy, but what you will be given is what I know, Naruto said. You only get to read it, but you don't get to keep it or make copies. Fine, said Snyder. Naruto smiled as he got up. Well, this went rather well. As he looked at Sai, come on Sai. As both him and Sai left the office, Snyder didn't release a breath once he was gone. Talking to him can be so taxing. You always have to be on guard, always. It must make you wonder how Sensei was able to keep up with him. Well at that time, the kid was still young and learning. Meanwhile the Uchiha compound, Mikoto was in the garden. As Sasuke walked up, it is surprising to see you alone without Naruto when you're not dealing with clan matters. Mikoto raised her eyebrow. I didn't think that you'd notice I've been spending some time with him, she said. You spend more time with him than his mother, Sasuke quickly said. Mikoto wasn't alarmed as she was calm because if he said anything he would just deny it or change it around. Maybe he might think something is up but she didn't believe that he would actually think what they are doing. Are you jealous? She asked. As Sasuke went silent, a little he said. Mikoto giggled as she was amused. The look on his face reminded her of when he was always pouting when he was little. Sasuke then spoke again. Is it because of what he did? Itachi never tell me much about it but I know that he was the reason why Itachi spare you and most of the younger generation. We still have a clan because of him and I still have you because of him. Is it that's why? Ask Sasuke. She looked at Sasuke fully. I do have a lot to thank because of him. You say you still have a mother because of him and for him I still have my beloved son and because of him I am not just a housewife anymore. I now get to act and be the woman who ushered the new generation of Uchiha's. But you should know Sasuke, I am not a Uzumaki, I am a Uchiha and so are you. You should understand what that means. We have our own future and we cannot allow anyone to shape our future for us. Yeah, I know Sasuke said. She then walked over as she hugged Sasuke. Sasuke, I love you and I will always love you. No matter what I'm your mother and you're my son. It is my duty to protect you and make sure no one, and I mean no one, try to make you into a puppet. You must have your own dreams, she said, as she then smiled playfully. Of course, I should also have fun along the way, she said. As Sasuke looked at her, I don't understand, he said. You don't have to understand it, Mikoto said, but know that my association with Naruto is for both his and your sake, and for mine as well, a bit, she said. Later that day, it's been a long time since he has saw his mother so excited, as Naruto told her he was going to meet up with a few of his friends at the bar, there was no reason to lie to her about that, as she was excited to hear that he was going out with some friends, as she told him he could partake in the sake, but don't get drunk, because he wouldn't have fun if they were drinking and he was not, as she gave him a big hug and told him to enjoy himself. So Naruto was currently in this loud place, and none of them had shown up yet. He then felt a tap on his shoulder, you're early, as Naruto saw Panther, come on we have our little corner for herself. As Naruto got up and followed the man to the second floor it was dark and had a couple of boots for privacy, he assumed. In some boots he could not hear what they were saying because of silence and seal, but that was useless, he could read their lips very well. When he arrived at their corner he noticed all of them were already there and the drinks were on the table. As he looked at the amount of steak and shook his head, yes, they were prepared to get drunk. Well, Anvus didn't get a chance to do something like this every now and then. 
missions were always at large and some things are just too much. Nothing important was being said, there was just casual talk. As it was strange for him, the normal for him was talking about plants and playing manipulative games, but nothing like that was happening. They were laughing as they shared stories. It was something else, he has never been in this kind of situation before. But then, they told him that he was too young to go with them. You're awfully quiet, said Kakashi, snapping Naruto from his thoughts. Naruto turned as he looked at Kakashi. It usually depends on the subject, they discuss, he said. Panther then smiled. I know what will get you interested, he said. Tiger nodded with a grin. So, how are things with you and the captain, he asked. No one was able to get close to her after her former lover was killed. In a moment of weakness, a certain Uzumaki invited her to his fortress that he called a home, said Panther. Ever since, the captain has recovered, quit Anvu, and even moved into that Uzumaki's house. So basically, Tiger said, we want to know if something is happening between you two. Kakashi perked up as he waited for a response. He had asked Yuji what's up, and she blushed. There might not be a relationship, but something happened. But she didn't want to tell him anything. Nothing happened, Nurka said. You should not assume things. You mean no accidentally bump into her when she's just coming out of the shower? No sleepwalking into her room? You are at that age, and even if you are Naruto, you're still human, Tiger said. You're being ridiculous, Nurka said. I have far more control of myself than being a slave to hormones. Ah, disappointing, Kakashi said. I thought that, but he was cut off. As Yujiro appeared and settled in between them, don't be fooled by that innocent mass of his. Trust me, he isn't as innocent as he looked to be. Trust me, I live with him after all. But there was no reaction from Naruto. Tell us more about Panther and Tigress at the same time. Well, said Yujiyo. As her eyes focused on Naruto, but there was nothing, not even a slight twitch. Alright then, Kakashi Senpai have to take off his mouthpiece for me to say it. And trust me, it's a fair deal. That's not a fair deal, said Panther, you know he won't do it. Don't worry, said Tiger. People are always talking, and Anfus are always watching. I'm sure we can find out something, as Yuji will beat her lip, as things wouldn't be well if they went that far for Naruto. And Naruto wouldn't be pleased with her if they were stalking him, trying to find out what. As she would just know it, he would have a talking when they get back home. Alright, promise me you won't tell anyone, she said. As both Tiger and Panther nodded. Alright then, he's in a relationship with me. His mother also liked me as well, that is why I moved in their house. Panther spat out his mouth full of sick as he splashed on Naruto, but he didn't pay attention to that as he turned fully attention towards Yujiyo. We were only teasing, but it's true? Yujiyo shrugged. Alright then, said Tiger. Prove it. Alright, fine then, she said, as she took another gulp of her sick. She went around to Naruto's side. Time skip, Naruto's house. Yujiyo slowly opened her eyes as it was no morning. What a night she had last night. Never again was she going to drink with those perverts. But it was really fun though. She has missed those kinds of night with the guys. As she fully opened her eyes, as she saw Naruto directly staring at her, his head resting on his palm. Naruto, what are you doing in my room? She asks. Well, come to think of it, she didn't even know how she got back here. Yes, it was that kind of night. As she had to keep up the facade that they were together last night because those two would have done nothing but constantly stalk Naruto to find out what is going on with them and they would have probably find out about Mikato. Naruto answered her question, staring at you, he said. Before that, I was sleeping. Do you have a problem? Yes, Yujiyo said. How did I get back here, she asked. I had to carry you back here and carry Panther to his place while Kakashi took care of Tiger. They were pretty out of it while they watched you shove your tongue down my throat and your hand was trying to get into my pants. As Yujiyo looked away, as she could remember that good, as they told her to prove that she was indeed going out with Naruto, a kiss wasn't enough. Those guys had kissed a lot of people, sometimes even man, for the sake of the mission. So after a couple of drinks, she pulled Naruto over and manhandled him. Of course he stopped her from going too far though, because he noticed that she was too drunk. Yet before that, he just went with the flow. If I hadn't done that, you'd have been in trouble, she said. You know, if everyone started to know, the entire village is going to spread. I was aware of that, nurse said calmly. But you were the one who actually started it. You didn't listen, so that is why I didn't stop you at first. That is why I went with the flow. 
She sighed. Did they bite though? Yes. But we have to play the part now because you couldn't keep your thoughts to yourself. There are some comments you should make because it will lead you into an uncomfortable situation. As Yujo held her head as she was getting a headache. No, she had to play a girlfriend to Naruto. As she cursed herself, this was going to cause a lot of problem. What would she tell his mother? What do you think would happen if your mother find out about you and Mikato, she asks. I don't know, but I know she won't be happy to what extent. I don't know. Mikato said that is something that will threaten her friendship with my mother. Then, there is also Sasuke to think about. He will resent me for it. This wasn't something there to want to think about. Because it would mess up a lot of things. Maybe you should start thinking about ending it before it becomes a problem. Your mother is going to be furious with Mikato, Yujiyo said. The first thing she's going to think is that her best friend took her son away from her and slept with him. She's going to think that you were the innocent one in all of this and she took advantage of you. I don't want to see that. You're a bad person for putting me in this situation. I am not seeing anyone now so we can play the part. But your mother doesn't have to know about any of this. Because I don't want to lie to her. She has been good to me, Yujiyo said. Are you okay with that? I have no problems, Nerta said. Besides, I don't dislike you. That hardly gave me pleasant thoughts, she said. As Nerta got up from his side and came on top of Yujiyo, what, what, what are you doing, she said. She wasn't resisting, she wasn't shouting, but her heart was beating very fast. The first time I kissed you, I came up strong. But you didn't seem to have a problem with it. Last night I didn't have a problem when you were hungry, devouring my lips. Like last time, it got me excited, he said. You don't mind if I do it again, do you? It's like I'm standing at the edge of a cliff, but I can't jump. I need you to give me that last push. As Yujiyo stared at him for a long minute, as her heart was racing, as she thought about it before, she has wondered how he managed to satisfy Mikato. That was just her curiosity getting the best of her and her loneliness. What happens after, she asks. The desire was there but she wasn't about to let him use her body for testing. I don't want my body using just for sex. I don't want you coming into my room looking for a pickup, she said. You Jo Nerta said looking into her eyes. Do you think I'll ever do anything to hurt you? Think about your role. I trust you enough with my mother's safety. For me, that's like my life. If I did something horrible to you, would you be able to look at me? Would you even be able to stay in the same room as me? What would my mother even think about me personally hurting you if I did it on purpose? As UJ didn't say anything, it seems like he really did care for her as she brought her head up as Nerta captured her lip. UJ, it was Kushna entering the room as UJ pushed Nerta off of the bed as he fell to the ground. As Kushna was already in there, it was too late. It, it's not what it looked like, Yujiyo said, as Kushna stood at the door frame. I will pretend to be innocent and stupid, and like I didn't give birth to him, Kushna said. So tell me, what does it look like, she asked. From her tone, it was difficult to tell if she was pissed off, or just surprised from what she was seeing. As Yujiyo looked at Naruto, as he didn't expect to be catch in that position. Um, um, as Yujiyo didn't know what to say, I was worried. I checked your room before I went to sleep, so I thought... I will check up on you, Naruto. So when I didn't find you in the room or the study, I perhaps thought that you might know something, Yujiyo. I didn't think that I would find this, Kushina said. So tell me, what does it look like? You have yet to answer me, Kushina said. Naruto sat down at the edge of Yujiyo's bed. As he was looking at his mother or Yujiyo, he was just looking out of space. How could he have get caught like that? What was he even thinking? He let his mind wander and race, and then he had to act in that way. How was he going to explain this though? She was looking at the both of them with an expressionless look on her face. There was no emotions. What was he going to say? He cannot pretend to be stupid. She knows he's not. Seeing neither of them said anything, Kushina spoke. Breakfast should be ready in 30 minutes. We will talk then, she said, as she walked away. Well, that was unexpected, Nerka said as he stood up. You think, Yujiyo said. For someone who has been an Anvu, it's not what it looks like. That's a stupid response. Hey, you didn't say anything. What would you say? She said. I don't know, but I wouldn't say that's not what it looks like. Well, better figure out what it looks like, Nerka said, as he started to walk away. Laugh while you can, but no. She's going to tell Mikato about this, and what will happen then. 
So while you take a shower, you can also think what you're gonna say to Mikoto. 30 minutes later, Naruto came towards the kitchen table. As his mother and Yuji was already there, neither of them were talking. Hmm, it was good that his mother didn't see Yuji as her daughter because she would have probably thought that they were doing something distasteful as in incest. So, she's not like his older sister or anything. As Naruto sat down, thanks for the food he said. So, have you guys changed your option or is it still not what it looks like? As Naruto was looking at his mother, I'm talking to you as well Naruto. It takes two pers to do something like that. I never said it wasn't what it looks like, Naruto said. And you, Yujeo? asked Kushina. I didn't know what to say at that moment and those words just slip out. As Yujeo felt like a little child under Kushina's gaze. It was what it looks like, Naruto said. Speaking up, Mother, do you want me to explain what was exactly happening? Kushina quickly shook her head no, she already saw it. She didn't need him to go into detail about it. There is no need. So, how long has this been going on? A minute before you came in, Nerta said. Kushina blinked. So you guys haven't? As Kushina thought that they, well, they weren't in the same bed. And it seems like Nerta didn't sleep in his room. And they weren't exactly kids. So that is where her thought went to. Nevertheless, Yujiyo, can you please excuse us? I want to talk Nerta alone. And after that, I will be coming to talk to you. Yujiyo picked up her plate as she walked away from the kitchen table. I know you two have been spending some time together. I mean the door is always locked in your study. You didn't talk anywhere about the study. I didn't think anything was building up though. Honestly, I'm surprised. I am happy that you're taking an interest in woman, but I thought it would be someone your age. Maybe Eno. I don't have anything against you, Jo. She's family already. Yet, this isn't what I expected. What are you trying to do, Naruto? I love you, but I also care about you, Jo. So answer this question. Do you love her? I don't dislike her, Naruto said. I know you don't. I know you trust her. This is why we're living on the same roof together. But do you love her, she said in a rather slow tone to try to get the message across to him. Naruto was silent for a few moments as he went through his thoughts. It would be a lie if I said that I actually love her. I was only grown to know to love you. Nevertheless, I understand the love between a mother and someone else like you, Jo, is different. So I don't really know what I feel for her. I cannot put it in words. Here's my second question, said Kushina. What is your objective in all this thing? Do you hope to one day marry you, Jo, into the Uzumaki? Or are you just enjoying your youth like the other children? What do you want, Mother Nerta asks? That scene I just walked into. Well, what was going to happen? If you are not thinking about marrying her, I will not accept it. Tamari is in the picture for now. For now you can forget about her, think about you Jo. Would you consider marrying her? That means making her happy, think about this and make a decision. Nevertheless, if you can't see yourself marrying her, don't waste her time. I love this family and I don't want anything to ruin it. Do you understand? Yes, Naruto said. Good. Now call you Jo. I want to talk to her alone. Naruto stood up. A minute later, you Jo walked back into the kitchen as she sat across from Kushina. I am sorry you had to walk in on that scene, said you Jo. Kushina shook her head. I let Naruto go out to drink and the following morning that happens. Well, at least it has nothing to do with sake. And that wasn't the problem. You guys are not childs, she said. It was nothing to do with the sake, said you Jo. Kushina then went silent for a few moments before speaking. What do you expect from Naruto, Yujiu? Do you want something to take off your loneliness? Do you want a relationship? Do you want a proper relationship? I can't answer that right now. But to be honest, I don't think I'm at an age where I have the time to experiment on things, said Yujiu. Kushina nodded. I don't have to tell you anything about Naruto. You know him. I love him, but there are things we have to admit about him. While I wouldn't say that he's evil, he isn't the nicest person in the world. I know he's manipulative and wouldn't mind us going far to play his hand with Snadi. She then paused. Do you think he will not go as far to even manipulate you, Yujiyo? To be honest, I don't know about that, but I know he won't lie to me. For him, the consequences is too big. Kushina smiled. I'm glad you understand what you're dealing with. Because if you're looking for something bigger from Naruto, 
You know that it won't be smooth sailing. Nevertheless, you know him. I am sure you can handle him. Someone his age would not bear with him. But if you can handle him, put a smile on his face. Lighten him up. I cannot ask for more. All I want is for my son to be happy. And of course your happiness matters too, you too. So think carefully before deciding what you do. I will try, said Yujeo. And next time, lock the door, okay? Kushina said that smile. Time skip. In the afternoon, Hokage's tower. Snadi looked down the request in front of her. And then stared back at Naruto. What is the relationship between you and the Fire Daimyo? What's the story there? As Naruto thought for a moment, the Fire Daimyo was a sly old geezer who tried to use him for a political game. Of course that failed because the third was there, but Naruto wouldn't have any problem with it. But then he thought though that the old man was powerful, but he was irrelevant when it comes to shinobi matters. He may control the fire country, but when it came to shinobi matters he had little influence and power there. Seeing that if a war break out, the Kages wouldn't hesitate to cast them aside if they are a waste of resources, so Naruto didn't bother to waste his time with that old man. Naruto looked at Snavi. We attempted to use each other when the third was still alive. I don't dislike him. But I've lost all interest in him. What? said Snadi. The third thought if we stayed friends it would reflect kindly on Konoha. And I will also earn some favors. However, I've come to understand that he's nothing. Maybe amongst a few the lords and with money. But in the shinobi world, money is not what makes you strong, Nerta said. So, why do you ask? Snadi blinked at that response. She was honestly surprised that you would tell her everything so simply. Was this his way of dealing with her in a fair way? Or did he really didn't care about it? So he just shrugged it off and just tell her because that wasn't really important to him. She shook her head, there is a mission request. And it call your name specifically. He wants you to carry his wife back to the capital. I don't really have the time and patience to babysit that woman, Nerta said. You don't have a choice, said Snaddy. You will escort her. You are due to leave tomorrow morning. Come in early and I will give. Further instructions. I should be done drafting my letter to the daimyo by then, she said. Hmm, you want to play that game as well, Nerta said. But Snadi ignored the question. I'm curious though, why do you want to earn favors with the fire daimyo? On the same subject, Nerta said, not answering her question. I will make a visit to Kiri. It will take at least a week. So I will be away from the village for that period, and Sasuke as well. Why Kiri? Why is that on the same subject? I don't see how those two connect, said Snadi. Shinobis are despicable creatures who betray Nerta said. Kill friends and family for petty reason. To be honest, I find most shinobi population, for the lack of the word, disgusting. But I see there is no way around it. But even so, people can change. Well, that comes being human. You can change your mind in the blink of an eye. I'm always on my toes because this world isn't safe. It repulsed me, but yet still I fear it. I want to connect a few dots to make sure there won't be any wars in the future. For a second, you sound like you want to do the good for the shinobi world, but I know this is just for you and your mother. I will not deny or confirm that, but it is for the good of the elemental nations and Konoha. He then waved his hand almost like he was dismissing, snadding suspicion. I will talk to you tomorrow morning, he said, at the Uchiha compound. Sasuke stared at Naruto for a long minute. As Naruto walked in like he owned the place, he just strolled in here like this was his house. Like this was the place he owned, but it was not. He may have been coming here since he was younger, but this was not the Uzumaki house. This was the house of the Uchiha's. Sasuke felt like he needed to establish that. I don't just walk into your house like that, Sasuke said. I am sure you wouldn't be happy if I did so, Sasuke said. Naruto looked at Sasuke a raised eyebrow as Sasuke was sitting with his mother. It wasn't often you find the two together, but it was mother and son. It should be expected. As Nerd looked at her to see if she agreed with Sasuke, but she merely smiled, as if she didn't want to comment or she found her son's statement amusing. It's because you can't just get in my house, Nerd said, settling down at the table. The table was littered with papers, obviously they were working together. But I should not act as if I'm the man of this house, Nerd said. It will not happen again. Well, that's surprising, said Mikato. You're in a good mood today, she asks. You can say that, Naruto said. He then turned towards Sasuke. I came to speak to you. It is important, I cannot leave without discussing it. Sasuke snorted at the word discuss. Since when did the blonde Uzumaki discuss things with him? 
Only thing he did was inform about things. I'm listening, Sasuke said. As Naruto turned toward Mikoto, he wondered if she had spoken with his mother already, but by the looks of things, it seemed that she hasn't. Well, if it meant that he could avoid the talk for now, until he leave the village, so be it. Right now, he didn't really want to talk about those things with her. Sai is already in the village, setting up things for the agency, Naruto said. As he was talking in front of Mikoto, this was a first, but he didn't mind it. We will still keep that base that I showed you, but most things will happen in this village. I have spoken to Sanadi about it and we're on the same page. Once everything is set, Sai will fill you up on everything, and you can visit when you need something, Naruto said. The Hokage actually agreed to it? What did you have to do to get her to agree? Nothing, Naruto said the shrug. You just need to have a way with words. You don't get everything through. Using forceful tone and demands. You must be willing to communicate clearly with people. To get them to listen to you. If people cannot listen, you cannot sell them anything. Spoken like a negotiator, said Migato. What more deals are you negotiating with the Hokage? This and that, Naruto said vaguely. The reason I came here is because I want you to come to Kiri with me tomorrow. It might take at least a week, but it is important, Naruto said. Hmm, you're making a move on the Mizukage, Sasuke said. Well, I can use some outside ear. What time do we leave? Just be ready by early morning, I will let you know, Naruto said. As he then stood up. Wait, Mikato said. What move are you making on the Mizukage? Nothing personal, Naruto said. But I'm not afraid to make it personal if that's what it takes to get her to see the same as me. I don't approve of that, Mikato said. Naruto shrugged, my mother doesn't approve of many methods I use. But you don't tell your mother the methods you use, Mikato said. That is true, Naruto said, but she is not ignorant of everything. As he then walked away before he was dragged in an argument. But guys, be any steps right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn the bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends on your social media platform. And stay in tune for the rest of the what ifs coming your way. And I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. But for now guys, I'm out. See you guys soon. Peace.